Hello, hello, Sarah of SEK Handmade here, and I am back with another Meet the Maker. And as you know, I love doing these interviews, and so I am so excited to introduce you to another wonderful maker whom I just love so much. Um, Tanya of Cornbread and Honey is just, she's just so fantastic. Sadly, we used to live close to each other, and I didn't really get to know her until after I moved. So I wish we had known each other when we were in close proximity and could have met in real person. But this is like the next best thing. So I know that you're going to love Tanya. I know that you are going to love all of her amazing yarn. Um, I do want to warn you, we have men working outside the house. Uh, which means that Weston, he just got up and moved, um, you know, is defending his territory sometimes. So um, hopefully he'll be good <laughs> during this. But if you hear some barking, that's what's going on. Um, and and Tanya has a little puppy, so there might be barking on her end too. So um, if you love puppies, definitely check out Tanya's um, Instagram feed and see. Oh, I can't remember if it's a him or her. So cute though, so cute. Um, and then make sure you watch to the end because Tanya has been so generous and is offering people who watch her whole interview a uh, special little uh, something something at the end. So you're definitely gonna want to watch all the way through, not only to learn about Tanya, but um, to get her a little special surprise at the end. So let's welcome Tanya. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. How's the weather by you? You know, um, oddly enough, there is sun outside here in Cleveland uh, in March. So uh, we're pretty happy about that. It was um, really chilly this morning, like mid thirties, but we're supposed to get up to 50 today. So um, in Ohio in March, it's really hot. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Yeah, we had a huge storm over the weekend, um, and we got like three inches of snow in like half an hour. So it was really, really crazy. Um, it was blowing and windy, and um, so I'm glad that that's gone, and I hope that it doesn't come back. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I was like... January, February, I was like, bring on the snow, bring yeah. on the snow. And we hit March and I'm like, okay, I'm done. It can stop. We have mm -hmm. gotten the most snow in March. We've, oh, we've probably gotten two feet of snow. Yeah. It's been a lot. <laughs> it's been crazy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Do you have like, do your kids love to go out and play in the snow? Has it been nice enough for them to get out? Cause some days it's been gorgeous at, for snow playing and other days it's just been um, you know what? They, this time they just went out. I didn't really get a say in it. And because we got a puppy, they have the excuse now that they can go outside with the dog. So they made these big balls of snow out there because it was the kind that would stick together. Um, so they really had a lot of fun. And Penny, she loves the snow. So she just goes out there and romps around. So the snow is fantastic. She does not like the rain. So oh, Weston is a hundred percent the same. Give him snow, give him sunshine, anything but rain. It rains yeah. outside and he's like, Oh no, 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 thanks. No. I'll, I'll just stay inside all day. <laughs> yeah. It, especially like at night when it's like the last time to go out before she goes in her little bed, she'll look outside. And if it's too yucky, she's like, mm, I'll just wait. And she just goes into her bed. So um, she's a lot of fun. And um, we waited a long time for her. So um, we got a little Great Dane puppy. So she's only going to be small for a very, very short time. Um, so, um, but she's really, really sweet. So she's so cute. Is she sleeping through the night? Yes. Yes. Okay. She is sleeping through the night. And um, she went to the doctor. It'll be two weeks on Friday. She went to the doctor and she weighed 30 pounds. So I'm guessing she's closer to 40 now. Um, so she's a big girl. <laughs> yeah. Do they yeah. have an estimate of how big they think she's going to get? Um, well, I am, I am very lucky. My um, young cousin became a vet. And so I'm very proud to say my cousin's a doctor. 
Um, and she is Penny Stockter. And she said that she's probably going to weigh about 100 pounds. So um, she's a female. So she, she'll be on the smaller, a little bit smaller side. But um, yeah, she's, she's going to be a big girl. <laughs> I love it. Have you always wanted a Great Dane? Have you had Great Danes in the past? Um, no, I have never had a Great Dane, but I always, always wanted one. And I had labs and I had German short hair pointers. And um, when I was a kid, we had just, you know, mixed breed dogs. Um, but I figured if I was going to have a big dog, I better do it before I get too old because they're a lot to handle. They're very strong. They're very large. You have, you know, a lot of training and stuff like that. So I figured if I was going to get my one giant dog, then I best do it um, before I get too old. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I, don't, I don't know. My, so my, my aunt and uncle had a great Dane. Like I remember him being a puppy I remember his scrawny little body and his enormous paws. Yeah. And then he got gigantic. And I remember him like walking up to the table and just like setting his head on the table next to you because, you know, he was big enough. <laughs> yeah. The table was like lower than him. Yeah. And um, and they have had great days ever since. So okay. it, it might be a little bit of an addiction. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> it might be because the short hairs were kind of an addiction. Um, yeah. And that was a breed that I had never, ever had before. I was never on a radar for. And um, I really just fell in love with them. I ended up having three of those. And um, once you get past that whole puppy thing, they're a breeze. Um, so I'm hoping that... Um, our Velasasaurus in there will be the same um, because, wow, puppy teeth. Wow. There's something to, to be, they're just fantastic. <laughs> they're so sharp. They are. And I was joking with somebody else. I was like, you know, it's kind of like if you have more than one child, it's like during that whole newborn phase and you're like, you know, tired and hungry and just, exhausted and you're like why did I do this again right so there have been a few moments like that where I'm like really I, I forgot about this <laughs> but you know overall it's been fantastic and the kids really love having a dog so um and that's what's most important really yeah uh it's the forgetting about it that allows us to do it more than once <laughs> for sure for sure. And I tell, like, I told my sister-in-law when she was pregnant with Isla, I said, it is totally the men in black movie with the little red thing that they press at the end. Because once you smell that little baby, you totally forget about all of the other stuff and you never remember it again until you're there and you're like, why? <laughs> no. Oh yes. I do remember this being awful. Yes. <laughs> This is why somebody said, don't do this again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, goodness. So, all right. Love the puppy talk. I could talk to you about dogs. And I know, right? Long. But let's, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? You said you're in Cleveland. Do you want to tell us like where you grew up? What other hobbies you have? Tell us about sure. a little bit, anything you want to share. So um, I grew up in Madison, which is, I don't know maybe 45 minutes from Cleveland. Um, very, very like farm country. Um, in fact, Mr. Green, back in the day, um, Mr. Green used to take his cows across our major highway, Route 20, when we were kids. And so the bus would have to stop and let Mr. Green cross his cows. And so, I mean, everybody had a farm. Um, there was no Walmart. We had like a Kmart and a Fisher Big Wheel back in the day. Um, it, it was just a very, very small town. Um, I graduated with a class of 254 or something like that. Very small. Um, and it was great to grow up like that. Um, and my grandparents grew up like in Pennsylvania, West Virginia. So they came here and they were like farmers. 
So my grandparents had a huge garden in their backyard and we spent a lot of time over there. Um, and that is where I learned like how to bake and how to cook and, and farming and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but my mom, my mom is the one who taught me how to crochet. Um, my mom always crocheted. I can always remember her crocheting. Um, and I started probably, I was about seven or eight when I got like, had my first project and got my first yarn and my hook. And, um, and so I just made like small things, washcloths. I would start a blanket, but never finish it. Like I have a whole tote full of the, all of the, my original crochet product projects are downstairs in the basement in a big container. And they're so hysterical because they're all like single and double crochet. And that's all they are. Like so basic. We didn't have like patterns. My mom didn't really buy pattern books or anything like that. So she just kind of made stuff up. Um, unless it was for a gift and then she would buy the pattern, right? But you had to go to the store back then to get the pattern, okay? So um, so that's where I learned to crochet. Um, and I was not very good. I was not very good for a very long time. And I think because I, I couldn't like concentrate, you know, I have like ADHD and I'm all over the place anyway. So, um, but I think that that's why crocheting is easier for me than knitting because I can't concentrate long enough to knit for very long. Um, and that's why I love crochet. I can now, I can just mindlessly crochet, you know, if it's a repeatable pattern, I can, you know, memorize it. I just love it. Um, but I love a good mindless crochet too, where you really don't have to think just get your hook and get your yarn and it just makes your day feel better. At least it makes mine feel better. Um, so, um, yeah, I live now I live in Painesville. It's about 20 minutes from where I originally grew up. So I didn't really get very far. Um, and it's again, a little small town. Um, all of my kids, I have six children. So, um, my older three children are already graduated. All of my kids have gone to the same school district. Um, my younger three are in elementary school. I have one that's going to middle school next year. So that's kind of crazy already. Um, and, and I joke because I have like two sets of kids. I had like teenagers and toddlers, but now I have adults and little kids. And so my adults want to be little kids and my little kids want to be adults. So I didn't, I didn't think that through, like, <laughs> I didn't really think that that would, like, I didn't know that was going to happen, but yeah, I have a lot of, um, they're a lot of fun, <laughs> a lot of personalities, but yeah, sometimes the little kids think that they're grown and mm -hmm. they don't understand why, you know, their 24 year old brother gets to stay up as late as he wants to when, you know they have to go to bed by nine. So, Yes. Those littles have such a strong sense of justice oh and such gosh. a poor understanding of so poor. that same is not always just. Right. <laughs> I was like, that's just not really how it works. Yeah. So, you know, um, so I've lived here in Painesville for the last 20 years. Um, and it's a great little place to grow up. Um, and then I fell in love with dyeing yarn. So, and that brings us here. So, okay, um, can I ask you some questions about some of the stuff you've already talked about though? Yes, for before sure. Before get into dyeing yarn. Yes. Okay. So you grew up on a farm. Do you currently have like a big garden or do you enjoy gardening still? Or is that something you've kind of let go? That's a lot of work. <laughs> no. All right. So I, I have not gardened since I had Hunter and he is six years old. Okay. He'll be seven here in May. So this year we have planned garden boxes um, all along the back where our, my original garden used to be. 
And um, so I have like 12 boxes planned out. So we have a bunch of like leftover lumber in the garage. And I was like, well, that's what we're going to use first because lumber prices are crazy right now. Yeah. So, and we got a compost. So we're yeah. composting. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of going back and picking up things that I love doing, but just couldn't for a hot minute. So, and then I'm not doing other things that I hated doing. So Good. I, I think that that's like the perfect like combination or like the compromise, mm -hmm. like, I planted flowers because my mom and my grandmother liked planting flowers and tending to them. I don't because I kill them. Okay, the only living things that I keep alive really are like people and the animals because they remind me to feed them and water them. Okay, mm -hmm. I have orchids and I take care of them because they're expensive. <laughs> okay, but I have a schedule on my phone that tells me to put the ice cubes in the orchids because I would kill them. Yeah. I don't, I don't have like that, like memory sequence, like that, like vitamins. I can't take vitamins because I don't remember. Uh -huh. I don't. So it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Like if I had to take a medicine every day, I would have to have a daily thing on my phone because mm -hmm. I would forget. So the rule at my house is if you're a plant that's going to live here, you better be hardy because right? you're going to get watered whenever I think of it, which is not very often. No, it's not. And I don't know why. Like, And I kind of want to be a plant person, but I don't think I have the capacity. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. But no. outside, like garden plants, oh, that's I just love that. Mm -hmm. I love to. Um, and I think that it's important for kids to know where their food comes from. Okay. Yeah. That to me is really important. Mm -hmm. And I think that growing up like that was very important. Um, you know, my grandmother, she taught us how to cook when you have nothing. And not that that's always the way that it is, but sometimes it is. So like, think back to the beginning of COVID when we couldn't get to the store, the shelves were empty. And my grandmother was just starting to get dementia at that time. And I remember I called her and I said, well, I can't even get to the store. And she said, well, what do you have? And I named off a bunch of stuff. And she goes, you can make about three things from that. So sit down and think about it. You know what to do. So just use your skills. So I think that it's important for people to know where their food comes from and for them yeah. to know how long it takes to grow things. <laughs> and I think it makes you appreciate it a little bit more. Absolutely. So. What are you planning on growing? Um, we're going to do tomatoes, peppers, um, cucumbers. My kids eat a ton of salads. We eat a lot of salads. Great. So if I can, you know, get my lettuces that way, herbs, mm -hmm. um, I love like zucchini and squash, all of those types of things. So that's kind of kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to try potatoes again, too. So Ooh, that's fun. Yeah. I have had so much luck with uh, spinach. Oh, yay. It's it seems very easy to grow. Uh, I was the only one who ate it, though. So the problem was me keeping up with the eating so that the plants would keep growing, because if I you understand. don't, you know, continue to pull the leaves off of them. They just kind of get too big and then bitter. And yeah. yeah and then they don't taste good anymore. Mm -hmm. The other you thing, and I don't know, um, is, uh, basil. Oh yeah. We used to grow basil. We call them our basil bush because they would get so big, so big. and make pesto and yeah. put it in the freezer and have pesto all winter from them. Oh yeah. I love that. Oh, I just love the smell of like, garlic and like onion garlic all of that oh so fantastic yeah. i have grown onions before which was pretty easy though that's like a it's a long game it is a long game <laughs> potatoes are a long game too yeah like you have yeah. to be in it for the long haul <laughs> I, I called my grandma one time i was like are these ever gonna get done i was like 
it's like gonna snow. She's like, nope, you just wait till them tops get done. And I was like, all right, well, we we had um we dug them up like the week before Thanksgiving, and we had purple potatoes for Thanksgiving. So it was like so like I don't know, it was just great. Like it made it like really like just for Thanksgiving, like gratitude. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's very satisfying to know that like I started this little thing and I nurtured it and now we have food. Yes. Yeah. It's just great. Yeah. And I agree. So cool for the kids to see like, this is where it comes from. This is what it takes. We go out, we don't grow. Uh, well, the house we bought actually has ras a raspberry patch, which is oh, yeah. super cool. Um, but then we go out to local farms and pick blueberries and strawberries. And it's yeah. just good for the kids to see that that little carton of strawberries that they eat through in 30 seconds, that that takes a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have raspberries, too. And my kids will go out and pick for me. And they'll be like, I only got six. And I was like, well, put them in the bag and we'll wait till tomorrow, you know. Yep. And we'll get six more. Um, I cover mine with like a red sheet when they're starting to get ripe. So the birds stay away from them. Ah. Little um, old hillbilly trick my grandma taught me. Okay. Anything like bright colored, they won't go towards. So if you have berries that are ripening um, before the birds get them, I always cover them while they're ripening so that I can go out and take it off, get my berries and put it back on so the birds don't get them. Oh, that's smart. I might have to try that. I yeah. love it. I love it. All right. So you said that your mom taught you how to crochet yep. when you were very little. Did you then just continue to crochet or did you like take a little break and then come back to it? I pretty much always had my yarn and hook and I didn't necessarily was always like making something, but I was always stitching something. Um, so yeah, I don't really think I ever broke up with it. Um, you know, sometimes I would use, do it more than other times. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, especially like, you know, young kids, you know, and I had my, my first set of kids very young. So it did take maybe a little bit of break, but I all made them all their blankets and they all had little hats and, um, they didn't look very good. Um, now when I look at them, cause they're old now, you know, when I can go back and look at these blankets that I made 20 years ago, I didn't do very well. Um, you know, I had to fix a lot of like my, um, um, my joins, um, and stuff like that. But, you know, when you're young and you're just learning, nothing's going to be as good as it is after you've been doing it for a very long time. So. Yeah, absolutely. So do you know how to knit and you just don't prefer it or do, have you not learned to knit? No, I can knit too. Okay. Um, I can knit too. And I only really learned to knit because I took a lot of flack from being a dyer that couldn't knit. So that was one thing in the very beginning that I took a whole lot of flack for is how can you dye yarn, but you're not a knitter. Well, I crochet, but see, right. The, the times have changed a bit in the last like eight they years. They have. Okay. Like in the beginning, I don't think people thought that, and this is my personal opinion. I don't. I can already feel I'm going to agree with you. Okay. I feel like people don't think that crocheting is on the same level as knitting. And so therefore those artists are not as appreciated as knitters. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. And that's just what I've seen with my own eyes um, just around. So um, I think that I love them both. Um, but again, I'm a better crocheter than I am a knitter. I kind of suck at knitting. I can I can do some knitting, okay? I can do some garter stitch. Um, I don't like to purl, not a bit, okay? And brioche scares the crap out of me. It's very easy. Is it easy? In the round, it's super okay. easy. 
Okay. Well, maybe I'll try it. Okay. Um, I have a pattern to suggest to you. So I'll okay, send it cool. your way. So it, it was my first brioche pattern and it would okay. look gorgeous with your yarn and okay, it was yeah. very easy. Go. So mm -hmm. I, I can knit, um, but when I make a mistake, I don't know how to fix it. So then I have to get Debbie to fix it. And then she tells me how horrible a knitter I am <laughs> because she loves me. And for reference, Debbie is um, one of my old lady friends. Debbie's 73 and she has helped me in my booths and she's come to yarn events with me and makes stuff for me. And so I am privileged to say that she is my old lady friend. And um, so, but she's a bit crass. And so she just tells me, you suck. Um, you suck at knitting. <laughs> All my stitches are twisted. And then she's one of those people that can't let a mistake go where uh, I can. I can just go on by. Woo! That's just a design flaw, right? It's unique now. That's right. So not her. Feature. Right. She has to fix them. So then every mistake that I've made for the whole thing, she has to tell me why it's all wrong. So <laughs> I'm not funny. very good, but I do crochet. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to have to back you up on that. I, I feel like one of my missions is to encourage crocheters to use the good stuff because I feel like that is a, a falsehood of knitting and crochet that right. knitting is fancier and crochet is not and so knitters get to use all the pretty neat fancy stuff and crocheters need to go just to the craft store and get the cheapest yarn they can find right and but let me tell you well a friend just sent me um a wedding dress that somebody crocheted like it it can get real nice and it can get real fancy. And if yep. you feel like as a crocheter, you don't deserve the fancy stuff, you are cheating yourself and you are missing out because it's amazing to work with. It, it is. And I was um, one of those people that only used acrylic yarn, right? Because I didn't know any better. And mm -hmm. back in the day, that's kind of all that there was, right? Yeah. That was readily available. Absolutely. So, but I always tended to buy the nicer mm -hmm. of in the acrylic section. Um, and, and I'm just going to say this too. There is a place for it. Yeah, okay? absolutely. And I'm not a hater of crochet. I'm not a, I'm not going to snob you because you use it. Um, I think that's rude and cruel. Um, so I just think that that's just completely ridiculous. So, yeah. But Yes, this is the only stuff. My stuff is the only stuff that I use now. Um, other indie dyers, I use their stuff. But yes, wool, the finer yarns are, um, they're much more pleasant if you have them up against your skin. Um, they're just more pleasant. I don't know how to yeah. put it. They're just Fantastic. And I definitely think that you should use crochet uh, or hand dyed with crochet. Um, and I don't, I'm, I'm sad to tell you that I don't have any of my samples here because they're at a trunk show because I have a lot of crochet samples. I probably have nine or 10, which is a lot for mm -hmm. an indie dyer. Most of them don't have a lot of crochet patterns um, or crochet samples mm -hmm. in their repertoire. Um, and I do because there's a place for it um, and they're gorgeous. So if you don't think that um, there's, there's so many crochet patterns that you can throw a fade into and get the same results out of than a knit pattern, in my opinion. Um, and some of them, I think they look better. Yep, I totally agree. Uh, as someone who knits and crochets, you can crochet a heck of a lot faster with a fingering a weight yarn than you can with <laughs> knit with a fingering weight yarn. Oh so. yeah, for sure. It'll just drag on for the rest of your life. You know. Uh, some of them have. <laughs> 
<laughs> Live and gap, okay? Like, let's be honest. Yeah. To find your fate is a huge, mm -hmm. huge shot. And I, yeah. I, I died it for years. I died for that fade for years before I ever had one in my hand to see how big it was. Lord have mercy. But let me also tell you how much yarn you're not using from this pattern suggestion. Okay? Sure. You can make a whole nother fade out of your leftover yarn. Because uh, yeah. some of uh -huh. those sections are so small, you're only uh -huh. using 20 grams out of a hundred gram skein. Well, sure. That's a whole lot of extra, mm -hmm. extra cost, extra waste. If you're not one of those people that reuses all of your stuff or you just look at it forever, you know, mm -hmm. so they're huge. Yeah. But, um, and it would took a long time because again, it's fingering weight. It mm -hmm. takes a long time. So yeah. I think crocheting is so much faster. Totally agree. Totally agree. Not that we're bashing on knitting. Not at I all. To knit too. <laughs> Not at all. Because I love that too. Um, yeah. Every they're day. They're different, but they're yeah. equal. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So how did you go from crocheting casually? Did you ever like sell your crochet makes? Yes. I... Okay. I did like baby blankets. I had a particular one woman would, every time she knew somebody that had a baby, she would call me. Um, and I have made some crazy, crazy blankets. Um, I did that crazy turkey hat. Um, I made about a million of those one year. Um, lots and lots of hats. I did the elf hat with the red and white swirl. I sold a whole bunch of those. Um, I did diaper covers too, um, way back in the day. Those were crazy. Um, so yeah, I did sell my crochet stuff before I started to dye. Yes. So how did you transition into dyeing? What got you into dyeing yarn? All right. So, um, I had a dog and her name was Basil. And, um, when Basil was um we got basil when she was eight weeks old on the fourth day that we got her she started to get really sick and by like day 12 or 15 they had diagnosed her um with pneumonia it took us a long time to get a diagnosis because um she was just acting very strange so when they finally got the diagnosis her one lung was really really bad and the other one was almost as bad and I had to take her to the specialist. And he said, um, if I save her, you don't have long. You will not have her for very long. And I said, okay, do whatever. I had already fallen in love with this little dog. She's this beautiful little chocolate lab. And so Dr. Hammer saved her life. And um, Basil was five years old. And she just was always sick. Always sick. She had an inactive thyroid. She got every infection under the sun. And for the previous six months, we had been fighting a bladder infection and it would get better. It would come back. It would get better. It would come back. And she was just really tired. And so I was heartbroken because I knew that the best thing to do was to let her go. So I needed to find a distraction. And so I found Etsy one day and I saw some yarn on Etsy and I thought I can do that. Like a true crafter. I could do that. I can do that. And so I ordered some bear yarn from Knit Picks and I had some leftover um, egg dyes because it was about this time of year. Um, Basil passed away on uh, March 15th. So it was around this time and I was like, I can do that. And I did. Um, and those first skeins were so horrible. They were ugly, 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 ugly. And I still have a few of those original ones. I did sell a whole bunch of those original ones too. Um, because dying 
was just getting popular then um, when I was coming in. So um, I decided then that I liked it and I didn't think that it was going to be a business. I was just going to dye my own yarn to use and make my own projects, right? Well, that didn't really happen <laughs> because um, as it turns out, I was kind of good. So I just kind of kept going. I bought better base. I went to a good supplier and started getting my bases. Um, still the original base that I use today. Um, I went and got good dyes. I invested $300 originally into this. And here we are. So um, it has not been without its battles for sure. Um, um, uphill, downhill, in between, all of the above. Um, but um, just... I just needed like a little glimmer of hope back then, you know, that, um, that I was kind of doing the right thing, you know, because, you know, when you have animals, um, that's, that's how it is. Um, so I, I took my broken heart and I made it into this and I get to make beautiful things every day. And then I get to watch other people take that and make it into something magnificent. And that to me is the best part of the whole thing is when I get that message back or somebody tags me on Instagram or Facebook, this is what I made. It just, it comes full circle that, um, you know, this is one of the greatest jobs in the whole world. That's awesome. Tell us about your business name. All right, cornbread and honey. So I chatted with one of my girlfriends who back then she used to do a whole lot of crochet stuff. And she said, well, you need to pick a name that is you. So naturally, I used a nickname. Um, when my ex-husband and I used were dating, he used to call me cornbread. So that is how cornbread came into the name um and the honey is for the kids so me and the kids cornbread and honey that's how it came to be so when i got divorced there's a whole lot of talk about well am i gonna keep the name am i gonna change it uh, and, and in the beginning it was am i even going to keep this business because um it could have been considered a marital asset. So in the beginning, um, I really didn't know what was going to happen. Um, but after some research and um, legal advice and all of that kind of stuff, um, my business, I can talk about mine in particular, is, is considered a sweat equity business, which means I'm the one who creates these colorways and if there's nobody else that can create that colorway or knows how to create that colorway it becomes my own and so therefore without me there is no cornbread and honey so it became all of mine so i didn't have to hand over anything because Without me, there was nothing. My um, my ex-husband did not participate in the business, so there was nothing for him to say was his in it. So then once we got past that, and I could not let go of the name, um, it kind of just became who I am, I think, um, because I've always been cornbread. That's who I guess I am. So... The last like six months or so, I felt more like that, like I was way back in the beginning. And so I think I made the right decision by keeping the name. I just changed the logo. Mm -hmm. um, I brightened it up. I freshened it up. It's, I think, way more classy. Um, 
And I'm really happy with keeping the name, but changing the logo. I love it. That's so great. I'm so glad that everything worked out. You do amazing work. And I would have Thank been you. sad to see you leave the yarn dyeing community. So tell us a little bit about like what you're dyeing up now, um, what, what you're working on. So right now, okay, so last year I did like these snippets of collections. So I did like 10 mini skeins a month in a collection. And so I put them all in a blanket. So this is the modern moss stitch blanket. And so I started with the end of the previous advent. So that would have been advent 21, um, which was very special to me because it was the last advent that Michelle was with us and she was my assistant and she passed away in January of 20, 2021. So here is our advent. And then January had all of these like, um, these here it was, it started here. So where the black is mm -hmm. to like here it was this fun bright colors for January and then I went muted for February each month had 10 mini skeins and I kind of wanted to show how you could fade from one to the next so I did that all year so I'm still kind of working on this because I will admit that I was going crazy because I couldn't find the yarn that I was using it's because I already stitched it on here. <laughs> I was going crazy looking for these mini skeins. They were already here. Yay. So I'm ready to go with the next ones now because I like looked for them for two months. I'm not kidding you. Because <laughs> I was like, where did I put them? The other ones are right here. They got to be somewhere. Here they are. So I have been working on my blanket. Um. And let's see, yarn wise, Starry Night. Ooh. So this is the Starry Night Gradient. Um, so I've been doing a lot of these. As of this morning, there was only a couple left in stock. Um, so the Starry Night has always been huge here at Cornbread and Honey. And um, so I, last year's, and one of the last year's advent was actually the starry night. And um, so I have been creating lots and lots of starry nights. There are currently six different colors in the sequence, which are different than the original starry night fade. So these are different, slightly different. Um, and I'm going to be revamping that whole fade. Um, because here's another thing. I can't go back and die the way I died seven years ago. You know, six, seven years ago when I was a new dyer, I die differently now. I've perfected techniques. I have different things. So if I want to have that fade again, I have to revamp it and like mm -hmm. bring it back because the old photos don't look the way I dye it now. It looks so much better. It's, it's, so much better. So that's kind of where I am with the yarn. I'm kind of working on the starry night, um, getting those colors. Um, this is a lovely yellow with some um, uh, yellow speckles. Um, so I love the starry night. It's always going to be one of my favorites. Um, and when Right before um, Michelle passed away, we decided that we were going to do the Starry Night for that year's advent. And I said, how am I going to pull 25 skeins out of the Starry Night? And she laughed and she goes, I don't know, but that's your problem. Okay. <laughs> so, and it, 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 was, it was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Oh, God. Um, so, the Starry Night is is what is currently going on. Um, the other thing that we have going on that I want to show you um, is skein coats. Do you um, recommend skein coats? 
I, I have some skin coats. Yes. I actually gave it to my mom because last time she was here, she was frustrated with something. And I was like, I have a solution. Yes. So, <laughs> skin coats. I have a whole bunch of these. These are for the 50 grams because I love a half skein because mm. sometimes it's more economical. Um, and that's another thing that I kind of, I'd like to say pride myself with being somebody who is economically conscious of somebody else. Like I keep my yarns moderately priced because I want it to be accessible to everybody. And I, that way, you know, you have a project. Let's go back to this, the, the fade conversation a few, a few minutes ago, you could probably get away with half skeins in that project and cut your budget mm -hmm. in half. Mm -hmm. And that could help somebody to be able to make that project rather than have to pass on it because they couldn't afford the full skeins, which are advertised. So that's kind of something else. I want things to be accessible to everybody because I have not always had money to buy the things that I have wanted. And it creates, I think it, creates a self problem where you, especially when you have um, social media and you see everybody, okay, those things aren't always true. Those things aren't always accurate. So I think, and I try to keep it real with people. Um, you know, this is, this is the way it is. You know, the kids got the flu. It's crazy here um, because that's real life, mm -hmm. right? So, um, we, I offer mini skeins, half skeins, full skeins, all of my full skeins are the same price. Um, you know, I don't differentiate between, um, DK and fingering. I know some people do. That's kind of crazy. They're all the same. So I want everybody to, to feel welcome. And, you know, if you have questions, ask me because no question in my mind is stupid. I hear that a, a lot. Like I'll get a message and like, well, I don't want to be stupid. No, you're not stupid. Nobody's stupid. No question is stupid. So um, if you have questions, ask me. If you need help, ask me. If you're having a bad day, message me. I will talk to you. Um, you know, I just want to be here for everybody. Yeah. Well, and I have to say... I can attest to your willingness um, to to dive into <laughs> um, maybe an off the wall project. So I saw this colorway. Remind me the name of this one. Uh, every beat of my heart. Every beat of my. I wanted to say don't go break in my heart, but I knew that was wrong. Every beat of my heart. Okay, I saw this skein or like in. I have the, I have another one back here in the tank with all the colors, like all lined up and everything. And I saw this on your feed and I was like, oh, I must make something out of that. And what I envisioned was the shawl that I'm wearing. So yeah. I knew I wanted the main body to be this color. But then I knew I wanted an edging. I had a, a vision for an edging and I wanted the edging to contrast. So I messaged you. I had screenshot your skeins mm -hmm. and I had pulled out, like I had zoomed in and I said, I want a contrasting color. I really like this part and I like this part. Can you help me? And you were like, yes, absolutely. And you dyed up several little uh, mini skeins for me and and said, what do you like? And I was like, well, um, I really like this guy, which yep. is what I ended up with. I actually let my Instagram vote. And so I, I picked this guy and where did it go? This guy, I think. Yes. And this guy. And I let my Instagram vote and they chose this one. So that's how we ended up with this. But then I was like, but also those other mini skeins, can I have them too? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you were so wonderful to, to not be like, uh, okay, Sarah, you, you worked with me, you oh, made yeah. things that I love. And I mean, you say, oh yeah, but not every diary is willing to do that. So no. And you know what? That's not the norm. 
Okay. It's not the norm that you send a dyer, anybody, and I'm not just talking a designer. I'm talking anybody, any customer can send me a picture and say, I really need a set made of this four colors, five colors. Sure. No problem. I don't know of very many other dyers that would stop and do that. Yeah. Um, and I will because my customers are important. Okay. But if you can't find what you're exactly looking for, then you're going to have to ask, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to ask somebody, Hey, I really like this, but can I like this, but can you do it in these colors? Yeah. No problem. Because we still offer a service, right? Mm -hmm. We still should be personable. And, you know, I'll be the first to admit the past like two years, I've had not had the mental, mental capacity to like handle a whole lot of messages and stuff like that. But as things clear and things become more clear, I am way more apt to reply back right away and all of that kind of stuff. Everything's back on track. That to say, I think it's important that you're connecting with your customers still. It doesn't matter how, how, what number is next to your little name on the Instagram. You should still be that same person that you were when you had one follower. And that's just my, my opinion. So, you know, I did a show at Wild and Wooly here in February. And there was a lady who came into my booth probably four times. And she kept looking and she kept looking. She said, I cannot find any bulky. And I said, you know, I don't really carry a whole lot of it because it doesn't sell well. I said, but I do have some at home because I'm doing a wholesale order for someone. And she said, I want to do that new Casapinka project. I want to have yarn for my friend for that past Casapinka cowl. And she works for Alaska Airlines. And so I wanted it in her colors, but I can't find anything. And I said, well, show me. And she showed me and she said, she's going to be here on Friday. This was a Saturday. So this lady was coming six days. And I said, I can do that for you. And I thought she was going to faint um, <laughs> because she was, she was shocked that I would say, yeah, I can dye that off the wall. It's five skeins. It's not anything that I would keep in stock. Mm -hmm. but yeah, not a problem because it's important. It's important to me. Well, I appreciate that because, um, because I think it's, it's really just wonderful. You're great to work with. I cannot sing your praises more about Thank how, you. uh, lovely and wonderful and kind you are. And, um, mm -hmm. Every skein of yarn I have purchased from you has been gorgeous. Thank you. Um, so you are very talented. Thank you. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you very much um, coming back um, and being um, a repeat designer of mine um, and a repeat customer and, and a repeat friend. So thank you. My pleasure. All right. Can I ask you some favorite things? Sure. Okay. Um, when you are crocheting, where is your favorite place to work? Because you kind of have to die in your dye studio. <laughs> yeah. Um, I sit in my um, in my my side of the couch, watching binge watching, usually a crime show, um, or some Big Bang Theory. I am I am a Big Bang girl. I love it. What is your favorite um, weight of yarn to work with, both dyeing and crocheting? Uh, fingering weight is my favorite yarn to dye. Oh, it just, it's just fantastic. Um, the older I get, the more I like to work with the DK yarn, um, mm -hmm. in projects. Um, but you can't beat a fingering weight yarn. You just can't because you double it up and you have a DK. You can add some more and make it whatever you want. Um, but you my favorite, favorite, favorite is the 100% three ply um, that I carry in, in the shop only because it has 490 yards and it's really squishy. So <laughs> if you don't really necessarily need the nylon, that's the one I would get. I love it. I love it. Um, what's your favorite thing to drink while you work? Oh, Pepsi or an iced coffee. 
I love it. Um, are you a caffeine all day long kind of person? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. All day. I can drink a coffee, an iced coffee at nine o'clock and go to bed at 10. Oh, yeah. All day. I'm so impressed. <laughs> what is your favorite color? Purple. All shades of purple? Oh, yeah. All of them. From the darkest to the lightest, anywhere in between. I just love them all. Um, I just, I don't know why, but I think because you can get different colors easier from the purple. I don't know. I okay. just think they're great. And they go with everything. Yeah. Is it your favorite uh, color to dye as well? Or do you have, do you have a favorite color to dye? Or do you find that you like to like really mix it up? I feel like you have a pretty wide variety. You do tend to lean, well, or maybe I tend to gravitate towards your bold colors, which I love. Um, I dye a lot of pink and which is really funny because I hate pink. <laughs> I hate it. My mom loved pink and we used to joke that she could smell pink in a store. Like she would just go right it. to it. Right. I it. So I, I dye a whole lot of it. Um, my favorite color to dye. My favorite colors to dye are actually ones that break apart and you can actually see the other colors that were mixed mm. to make it. Those mm. are my favorite um, because you never really know what you're going to get. That's cool. That's cool. Um, what is your favorite season? Fall. I love the, the leaves changing um, and that the fall air, it's just, it's, I just think it's the best. And I like yeah. Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite item to make? I like to make hats. Hats are fun and they're quicker. Mm -hmm. um, so you get that finished gratification <laughs> a little bit sooner, mm -hmm. especially when you're working in between longer projects. Yeah, absolutely. Are you a book or a podcast person? A book. Yeah. I love to read. Um, I've always loved to read. Since I was a kid, I would have three or four books going at a time. Um, I just I just love to read. And I so crazy. I like the smell of like libraries, like mm. smells like official or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So are you a physical book or an ebook? Oh, physical. I have to have the paper. <laughs> I, I can't read on one of those things. It just feels unnatural to me. Yep. Yep. Um, if you're going to grab a treat, are you a salty or sweet kind of treat person? Hmm. Well, that depends. Um, I like chips, but I also like ice cream. So, um, but we joke around here that um, ice cream is for depression. So um, when my kids <laughs> were littler and they would be sad, we would have to go to the Dairy Queen and get a depression ice cream cone. So. Um, <laughs> I love it. That's hilarious. Um, I do. I like chips. I like chips. All kinds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I normally ask people what's worse. Um swatching or weaving in ends, which you can answer. But then I also want you to tell me what's the worst part about dyeing yarn. Okay. Um, I don't swatch. I'm really bad. So, <laughs> um, but I he equally hate weaving in ends. <laughs> I'm going to say weaving in ends though. It's the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. Um, and what's the worst part about dyeing the yarn? Yeah. I can imagine, but I've never actually dyed yarn, so I don't know. <laughs> All of the other stuff. Yeah. Okay, because you think it's the just dyeing. You, yeah, you just think it's the dyeing, and it's not. Okay, because then it's you have to rinse it. You have to spin it. You have to hang it. It has to dry. You have to twist it, tag it, and either hang it and or ship it. So there's a whole lot of steps in between and it's very labor intensive. Wet yarn is very heavy. I bet. Okay. Which is why I have another umbilical hernia. 
Oh no. <laughs> yeah. So I believe it. It's heavy. Okay. The buckets that I put the yarn in to move it around, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. It's water is heavy. Um, it's also hot. Uh, I've gotten burned a few times. Um, it's messy. Um, water gets everywhere. Um, I'm always covered in dye. I'm always a different color. Um, my hands are always, <laughs> I always look like I'm dirty and it's, it's dye. I don't know what to do. So that goes through the gloves. I break a hole in them. It, it never <laughs> fails. So one time before a show, I put my hand in an inverted black glove. I had just done a whole bunch of black <laughs> dye and I like took it off. Right. Well, I didn't, wasn't paying attention. And I just stuck my hand right in. The whole thing was black. It looked like I stuck my hand <laughs> in like grape juice. It was so bad. It was horrible. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're careful, like clean dyer, you should have no problems, but I don't, I don't really know any of them. Because I guess <laughs> that's part of the fun too. Okay, is 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 the process, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but my favorite part of the of the job is the actual dying part. The rest of it, like paperwork and like taxes, that stuff is <laughs> yuck. It's yeah. not the fun part, okay? But you know, and I think that that's where a lot of like the, oh yeah, I can have a yarn business. Well, there's a lot more to it than just showing you guys this on the Instagram and stuff. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So there's a lot more to it. Um, and the yarn, it's everywhere. Like we live, eat and breathe yarn because we don't have a studio. It's in our home. And mm -hmm. so we live, eat and breathe yarn. Um, and my kids have, grown up with it. So um, they'll tell you how many yards is in a full skinny yarn if you want. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Okay. So we save this to the very end. Mm -hmm. What You have a special offer for I those do. who are watching. Why don't you tell us about that? So um, from today through the 25th, you can save 20% in our online shop. Um, with the code S E K handmade. All one word. All one word. Okay. Um, no capitals or anything okay. like that. Okay. Case sensitive. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. So no capitals. Nope. Okay. No minimum purchase or anything like that. Um, so twenty percent for you guys. Um, at our um website www.cornbreadhoney.com. And all the links to all of Tanya's stuff are in the description below. So check those out. You don't even have to go anywhere. You just click that little yeah. box and her website will be there. It'll take you straight there. If you want to be twinsies with me, you need a skein of um, Every Beat of My Heart and you need a skein of Galaxy. But if you wish that it was made in this color, then this is crimson. So highly recommend Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. It was really lovely to chat. I appreciate it so much. It was good to see you. It's good to see you too. Oh my goodness, you guys. Another wonderful interview. Please, please, please check out um, the description below. Links to all of Tanya's stuff. You can follow her on Instagram. She shares all of her gorgeous yarn. She's amazing at taking pictures. Uh, one of the things I really appreciate, we all know that like, Screens show things differently, but I I have had uh, some uh, struggles in the past where you see a yarn um, pictured and then you get the yarn and you're like, that's not what that looked like. I have never had that problem with Tanya. She takes great care to photograph all of her yarns uh, very accurately. So uh, what you're seeing is what you're getting, of course, you know, taking into account that screens are a little different, but um, I think you'll find, you'll be very pleased. Use the code to save, highly recommend um, really all of her wonderful stuff. 
If you enjoyed this, I do these Meet the Makers and I started a podcast weekly. I would love it if you enjoyed this, if you would subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, like this video, maybe share it with a friend who'd love to little know a little more about Tanya. Thank you again for joining us and happy crafting.